All right, buckle up everyone, because today we're diving headfirst into a topic that has the entire creative tech world buzzing. It's true, the energy is palpable. We're talking about Touch Designer's groundbreaking update, point operators, or POPs as the cool kids call them. And let me tell you, this is not just some incremental upgrade. This is a seismic shift in what's possible with real-time visuals. Okay, so for those of us who are just tuning in, give us the lowdown. What are POPs? Yeah, what are they and why should we be freaking out about them? Imagine this, you're a digital artist, right? But instead of pixels, you're sculpting with millions of tiny points of light. Okay, I like where this is going. POPs are like gaining superhuman control over each and every one of those points. They're a whole new family of operators built specifically to handle that kind of complex 3D data. So we're not just talking about like making a shape move across the screen. We're talking about orchestrating a symphony of light and motion. Exactly. And here's the real kicker. This update taps into the power of your computer's GPU. Hold on, you mean the same tech that fuels those crazy realistic video games? Precisely. The same tech that used to be reserved for like high-end CGI and special effects is now literally at your fingertips. Okay, mind officially blown, but I gotta ask. What's the catch? No catch, just curious. For those of us who aren't creating the next avatar, why does this matter? Like, how does this translate into the real world? It's all about unlocking a new level of immersive experiences. Think interactive art installations that respond to your every move, data visualizations that come to life before your eyes, concert visuals that sync up perfectly with the music and the energy of the crowd. Okay, see, now that's what I'm talking about. This is sounding way cooler than any laser light show I've ever seen. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I have to ask about SOPs. Ah, yes, surface operators. Right, because Touch Designer already had those for working with geometry. So how do POPs fit into all of this? Are they like rivals? It's not a question of one replacing the other. Think of SOPs as the sturdy foundation. They're great for building the static elements of your scene. Okay, so like the stage, the backdrop, that kind of thing. Exactly. But when you want to unleash a swarm of fireflies or create a swirling vortex of energy, that's where POPs come in. They're all about dynamic, fluid motion in 3D space. Okay, I think I'm starting to get the picture here. It's not just an upgrade. It's like opening a door to a whole new dimension of creative possibilities. But it's more than just fireflies. Imagine walking into an art gallery, and as you move, millions of particles react to you, swirling around you like a digital aurora borealis. Whoa, okay, now that's what I'm talking about. Interactive art that actually interacts. No more just staring at a static canvas. Tell me more. Our source material talks about how POPs are being used to visualize scientific data in real time. Imagine like complex data sets coming to life, revealing hidden patterns and insights through these mesmerizing displays of light and movement. That's incredible. It's like taking something that would normally be stuck in a spreadsheet and turning it into a breathtaking visual experience. And it's not just about making things look cool. The source even mentions how these kinds of visualizations can help scientists actually understand the data in a whole new way. Oh, interesting. They can spot trends. They can identify anomalies. It's like they've got this whole new lens through which to view their research. Yeah. Okay, now I'm getting chills over here. This is seriously powerful stuff. But let's bring it back to the creative side for a minute. We were talking about concerts earlier. Paint me a picture. What would a POP-powered concert visual look like? All right, picture this. Lasers. Right. But not just shooting across the stage. I'm talking lasers that are morphing and dancing with the music, responding to the artist's every note, to the audience's energy. Okay, so we're not just talking about pre-programmed light shows here. We're talking about visuals that are like alive reacting in the moment and imagine those lasers are made of millions of tiny particles each one programmed to move and behave in a unique way that's insane that's like next level stuff what kind of computing power are we even talking about here it's mind-boggling and there's this one image from the source shooting rays and mesh manipulations that perfectly captures it oh yeah what about it this image, which used to take hours to render, can now be manipulated and interacted with in real time thanks to POPs. Okay, need to see this image. Can you even imagine if they projected something like that onto a building with the wind and the city lights interacting with the visuals? It would be like something out of Blade Runner. Exactly. But it's not just about scale and spectacle. Right. POPs give artists this granular control over every aspect of those particles. We're talking about influencing their lifespan, how they interact with each other, even like 
whether they leave trails of light behind them as they move. So it's like the level of detail is just off the charts. Exactly. And it's that level of detail that allows artists to create truly believable, mesmerizing effects. Okay, so it's like the difference between finger painting and wielding a paintbrush with a thousand bristles. You have so much more precision, so much more control. That's a great analogy. But all this talk about power and precision makes me wonder, is this something that only like seasoned touch designer pros can handle or can someone who's just starting out wrap their head around POPs? That's the beauty of it. While mastering any tool takes time, POPs are surprisingly approachable. Touch designer's node-based interface is actually pretty intuitive. Right. And there are tons of resources available online, including talks from the 2024 Touch Designer event in Berlin. You know I love a good deep dive. Were those recorded? They were. Even if you couldn't make it to Berlin, you can still catch the highlights and see what all the buzz is about. Perfect. Adding that to my watch list. But before we get too sidetracked, Let's zoom back in on the nitty gritty of how POPs actually work. We've talked about their advantages, but I want to understand concretely how they differ from SOPs. And our source material actually highlighted a few key points on this. It really boils down to three main advantages. Greater control, seamless 3D integration, and of course that jaw-dropping performance boost we talked about thanks to the GPU acceleration. Okay, break that down for me. Greater control, what does that actually look like in practice? All right, imagine you're creating a digital galaxy, right? With SOPs, you could create the stars, the planets, but POPs. POPs let you control the very fabric of space-time itself. Whoa. Okay, hold on. I need to process that for a second. You can dictate how stars cluster together, how cosmic dust flows, even how a black hole warps the light around it. It's a whole other level. So it's like, instead of just arranging a still life, you're directing a symphony of celestial objects. Exactly. And because POPs integrate so seamlessly with Touch Designer's 3D environment, you're not just creating these effects in isolation. You can have your particle systems interacting with other 3D elements in real time. Right. So it's like this whole feedback loop of visual complexity. Exactly. This is where that shooting rays and mesh manipulations image comes to mind again. Oh, absolutely. It's like a trap light in a bottle. It's incredible. And the fact that it's all happening in real time, that's the game changer, right? Oh, totally. Think about the possibilities for live performances, for interactive installations, even VR experiences. We're talking about a whole new era of visual storytelling. It's mind-blowing, really. And you know, it's funny. We started off talking about this one very specific update to Touch Designer, but it feels like we've stumbled onto something much bigger. I agree. It's a paradigm shift. It's like we've been given a glimpse into the future of creativity. You know. And the tools are there for anyone who wants to explore it. And that's the exciting part. It's not just for the tech wizards anymore. Anyone with a vision can jump in and start creating. And that's what's so inspiring, right? Mm. This technology has the potential to democratize creativity in a way we've never seen before. Absolutely. The only limit is your imagination. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, I think we've done our due diligence for today's deep dive. We've gone from the technical nuts and bolts to the philosophical implications and everything in between. It's been quite a journey. It has. But for our listeners who are just joining us at the end here, if you only take away one thing, let it be this. POPs are not just a cool new feature. They are a fundamental shift in how we can create and experience digital art. And that is incredibly exciting. It's a whole new world waiting to be explored. And on that note, we'll catch you all next time for another deep dive into the cutting edge of creative technology.